I'm grateful to have my friend and medical school classmate Gina to talk about her non-traditional journey to medical school for studying music and taking a bit of a longer journey and hopefully this will encourage some of you guys that are considering taking a non-traditional journey to medical school. I didn't think about starting medicine until I think I was 23 or 24 maybe around that time. I feel like it was before 25 and I was finishing like my graduate studies in piano performance in Baltimore and I've started making friends for people who were in um, public health or just interested in like medicine and the sciences and I was like oh that's a thing that I could have done oh, whatever I'm too far deep into music like I can't do that there's my master's and something called a graduate performance diploma um, at a music conservatory in Baltimore and I was doing the graduate performance diploma because I thought I was going to do my doctorate in musical arts so I was like pretty committed into the program and had a very good teacher um, who I think I wouldn't have gotten that far if I didn't have um, her as my particular studio teacher. Um, at some point I realized though that it wasn't for me. I think the final thing that made me realize that music wasn't for me was I was talking to a friend of mine who is a phenomenal piano um, and she and I were having a conversation like a few days before our Peabody audition and she was saying like oh uh, I don't really care what happens I just want to get better at music and I was like oh I don't I don't have that same drive, but I kind of knew, like, maybe this isn't the path that I should be going through. I didn't, I wasn't feeling fulfilled in my role as a piano teacher, and that was important for me. That was a large part of what was important to me, and that's my experience from, like, leaving music and, like, the pressure of my, my studio teachers, and she was very, very generous, and she was trying to, like, say, like, oh, stay, I'll, you can... I'll, um, you can be my assistant for a couple of years, and then you can try again for the uh, the doctorate. So, like, it's hard to walk away. There's going to be a lot of crying involved, but if it's the right choice, it'll be the right choice. And I had to pack up everything in Baltimore, and I had to move back home with my parents. And this was a time when everyone, when they were 25, were either, like, you know, finishing their degrees and getting jobs or getting married or buying a house or having kids or, like, all of the above. And I felt like I was really going back so that was really difficult um, and then I started teaching for a little bit and then I still wasn't sure about the sciences um, when I was in high school I only took biology because I never took chemistry I never took physics so that was difficult I had to decision to try it online and I did it through I think Athabasca like an online university just to feel like I could do this and see if it was for me and I did and I was like oh okay like this isn't too bad like I, I kind of like this material like I, I feel like I could do it and then like a little bit more so I started taking more courses and more prerequisites and then UBC where both Shannon and I go drop their prerequisites at the first time without with only doing about half the prerequisites and then I finished about the only thing I didn't end up taking was physics I took everything else I took biochem I took ochem I took biology and and general chemistry time and that was good enough for UBC and I applied with that second MCAT score so I didn't apply like the first year that I wanted to apply I think I only applied yeah I only applied to McMaster because oh they didn't want me fine, it's whatever. I got accepted the, to UBC. Now here I am. I know I made the right choice because I do like, well, no one likes studying, but when I study, it's not like playing the same passage in Beethoven for five hours a day, wondering whether this was piano, or this was forte, or this is mezzo forte, and like, why should it matter? He's dead, no one cares. It, it didn't have that kind of kind of same existential crisis. One of UBC's pre-med diversity symposiums. Actually, it was pretty helpful. I, I did enjoy that. I think that was, I want to say 2015, I came back to Vancouver 2013, I started my first science course, I think in 20, I want to say 2015, I think I went to think on 2016, I couldn't make it for 2017, and then, then I applied the year of 2018, and then 2019 was when we got in, right? Did we get in 2019? I'm sorry, 2018. Yeah, so then, that, yeah, that's it, yeah. That doesn't work for me, some people really like that, and like all the more power to them. Um, I think a big part of my journey was learning to realize that different doesn't mean bad or doesn't mean good. It just means different. So mm -hmm. in a very not summarized, large nutshell, that is the nutshell of my meandering path. <laughs> touching back, because we just, we talked about this earlier when we were prepping what you said about like, now that you're in med, sometimes you feel like some people... Um, some people, most people are nice, um, are kind of judgmental about people who come from like a non-science background. Um, I definitely felt a little bit of that vibe, but again, that might be my own projections of my own insecurities. I'm like 
very insecure about stuff like that, especially when I first got in. I was very insecure because I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And I felt um, like, oh, my gosh, I'm so behind. And not only am I behind in terms of content, I'm behind in terms of years. Like, people were going in from, like, high school to college to or university to um, school. And then I had this, like, gap in between where I wasn't studying. And you kind of have a certain mindset when you're studying that you don't have when you're working or, like, when you don't have to be doing this. Mm -hmm. So to to re to re um, introduce myself into that environment was difficult towards the end of second year and even in the middle in the middle of second year I was feeling like oh we're kind of like evening out and people everyone said that when I when I went to school like oh it starts out like this and that we all kind of like do this and then and I didn't really believe them but like it did happen so I was like oh like was there anything like you would have told your past self or done differently about your journey don't hate yourself <laughs> if, you're, if you're failing. Like, don't, if things are not going well, don't beat yourself up. Enjoy your youth, your sweet, collagen-filled, happy, bright, shining youth. I think it's hard to put that in perspective, like, when you're, like, in the moment. Like, I'm sure in 10 years from now, I'm going to be like, oh, she in her 30s is an idiot. But, like, whatever. You know, it's, it's fine. But I don't think we realize that in the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I could, like, tell, like, 17-year-old Gina or 27-year-old Gina, no, 27 was only, like, six years ago, let's say 23-year-old Gina, I'd be like, okay, it's okay. You're going to get through this. Try to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't beat yourself up. <laughs> so for those of you feeling like you're too old, you're never too old, honestly. Um, but, yes, it will take a lot of resources and a lot of time, and it was very difficult extracurriculars it oh. was mostly work because i like i've been pretty much teaching piano on and off since i was like 15 or 16 um so most of my extracurriculars are centered around my work history as a piano teacher i i volunteered at a hospital um that was a good experience i volunteered at connects austin network and i also volunteered for connects austin network because i had like a family member that has um that is on the autism spectrum disorder uh, I volunteered for this particular hospital because my that's where my grandpa was at that time, and like I was like, okay, well, now I've had experience like going to that hospital. I guess I'll go there. And when I wrote out my application, it didn't really seem like too amazing. I just put whatever in that I was do that whatever I had, just whatever that I thought would be show that the person that I am. Um, maybe some church stuff, uh, some taekwondo stuff from when I was a kid. My piano performances, I put that in. <laughs> were there any consequences that you were afraid of when you decided to make the switch? Were there any consequences that I was afraid of? Oh, yeah. Like, if I, if I don't do this, like, what will I do? Like, I'll just, I guess I'll have to figure out something else. And, like, that was scary. I'm just feeling like I may have, like, maybe I'm just wasting, like, these years. Um, I didn't like the, the fear of rejection and the fear of failing. And the pain or whatever. Calgary Med. I think he's got a blog post, and, and, like, I guess he's addressing the questions that students were asking, and he did say, like, you know, this, a lot of it is also luck. You know, luck does play a role. Mm -hmm. You could be, like, the most amazing candidate and the kindest person, the most compassionate, most intelligent, whatever, and you might not get accepted. The first year, the second year, the fifth year, maybe you'll never get accepted. And mm -hmm. that's not going to say, like, you're going to be a bad doctor. Like, a lot of candidates that do apply will make fantastic doctors. You know, the program does, I think, kind of shape you and tries to, to, to work with you. Mm -hmm. There is some luck. Like, who, who like, well, how, like, how did your interview go that day? Like, how were you feeling that day? Like, who were you inter being interviewed by? Were you feeling comfortable that day? Like, so, that's scary, like, to not have control. How did you <laughs> overcome that, I guess? Like, that... Like, I don't know. I don't think I did. I think I just like, oh, I'm scared of this. Okay, well, let's just keep going. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't. Can can anyone overcome the fear of failure? I don't know. Maybe a fear of failure means that you are prideful. I don't know. I think that's just something I'm still always going to be scared of. But I think that a lot of that fear comes from insecurity because if I fail, that means I'm not being the person that I thought I could be or like that I thought my, par my parents think I could be or my friends think I am or this or that or like, people said you were smart. Like, oh, that's a lie. Like, I wasn't this at all. Like, I'm, I'm just an imposter and like the reality of who I am will be exposed to the world. That's scary. But also, that's also prideful because you are what you are and if you don't know, you don't know. 
you know what you know and you don't know what you don't know is like that's 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 it and i think if you can accept those things about yourself maybe that fear of failure won't be as present you just keep trying and and, and if you figure out something that's like oh like that didn't work it's like oh yeah i remember that time i was like this like okay well let's, let's try to not be like this the second time and over something like that is to realize like it's, this isn't everything. Like this, like everything may be terrible right now, but in ten years, in twenty years, or if the world ends because the zombies come and eat us all, whatever, then we don't have to worry about anything. But like, like putting things in perspective, I think, I like, and also recognizing that sometimes the feelings are too raw and you can't put it into perspective. But just like, okay, ah, if only I could take my own advice. <laughs> no, I was gonna just like, you know, like. Mel did that thought, and I was like, yo, of course that's gonna be devastating, man. Like, I think, like, the, I think the closer you get to the finish line, like, the first time. Oh. oh, yeah, like, if you had just failed at the beginning, you're like, oh, not for me, I can go on. But, like, the closer you get, like, I really, like, my heart goes out for the people who, like, interview multiple times, or, like, get to the interviews, and then they're like, oh, they got to the interview, and like, oh, you know, like, that's how, how do you do that? Like more power to you because of your resilience, your your just your strength and like your determination. And if you really know this is for you, like okay, like you're doing it. Like I respect that. Like just because you didn't go there, but like there's like there's like it's just like people don't care, you know. Like it doesn't matter after a while. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you become and how how you work and like how how you keep going and and building resilience. However, that that actually feels relatable in terms of I think thinking back as a pre-med, so, like, I think just, like, stuff like not going to the university you wanted to go to, and just, like, I think, I think adjusting expectations. I think probably where you and I's story is similar is that, like, this was the, um, you know, the transition from grade 12 to, like, undergrad. Most of us come in with, like, you know, doing really well in high school. Basically, anything we wanted, if you worked hard, you could basically get it. And then just, like, you know, more of the real world is, like, like that there's a bajillion amazing people out there. And the, and it's it's like it's, it's not a competition, but it's like there, uh, there's just like a bigger world out there, and just like that's a big picture. And so like I think like um, for example at UBC like you have to at UBC Science you have to compete basically to get into like the science majors. You have to like you know the oh. best rate get their first pick of major, and then they kind of something like that. I don't know. I think they still oh. do. That. Okay. So okay. I think like I do know like people. Some people were devastated because they couldn't get into. So, for example, there's some, like, really popular majors that only have, like, 30 people. Um, oh, I didn't know that. That sounds stressful. Oof. Yeah. So, um, for some people, some, some of our classmates have, like, for example, pharmacology and, like, physio- um, they call it CAPS now. I think it's, it's like, physiology, basically. Um, but, and so, like, I think those are, like, moments where it's, like, super devastating because you're, like, uh, the plan is I'm going to do this and this is how it's going to turn out. Um, and like that doesn't that's not how it, it turns out right and so you feel like I think when it's like it, I think for me at least when like, things like this happen I feel like it's because when these things don't go well it feels like a reflection of self-worth because like you're like this is supposed to go well and like why is it why is it not I think even when I got so I got UBC, my CBC letter I think the very last I want to say I think I got my so I applied to like I think four schools so I got like rejected rejected waitlisted um, and then, like, I was like, well, rip. <laughs> I'm like, haha, rip. But I think, like, at that time, similarly, like, I don't think, like, rejection from things you were hoping for ever feels super pleasant. I think, like, no. Yeah. And it's, like, this really, I think it's a really tricky thing because sometimes I'm just, like, do you, like, do you want to expect, you know, expecting, you know, like, people say, like, expect, hope for the, hope for the best, but expect the worst. Definitely, as a pre-med, if you're looking at med students and like thinking we our path was you know we knew what we were doing and feel like even though it seems like we we've made it i like don't i guess like no one ever feels i think most i think we're trying to get to that point where we feel like i think we get to that point where we feel like at peace with the fact that we'll never never feel like perfectly together kind of being at peace with our imperfections but i think no one ever gets to that point where all the situations of life Yes. Yeah. Are, um, yeah. are together. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so this was Gina, all right. me. Um, if anything we said left questions, leave a comment below. Um, hopefully this was helpful.
I hope it helps tell anyone out there. Um, so subscribe, like the, the video. Apparently, liking the video helps to get ex exposed to other oh, yeah. people. Like helps it helps refer them on to other people or something. I don't know how it works. Oh, uh, okay, okay, interesting. Uh, anyway, yeah. like, subscribe, ask us questions. Thanks, Gina. You will be. Thanks, Gina. Bye. I'm Shanna, a Canadian medical student. Every Wednesday and Friday, I release interviews with different med students, physicians, advice videos, and videos based on viewer comments. Subscribe to not miss a chance to learn how to be the most productive and stress-free med student or applicant you can be. Let's thrive, not just survive in medicine together.